Hey there, it's Lee. How you doing? It's, it's late. Uh, I've been up doing research for about three hours, something like that. So uh, I want to talk about something. I was just going through WikiLeaks, some of the new drop, drop 10. And this is an email from John Podesta to Cheryl Mills. And it's about a story. Uh, the story's listed down here. Uh, you, you can find it by searching for Breitbart. Um, and it was a story about how uh, Podesta's firm, uh, people died in illegal human experiments carried out by John Podesta Backer's firm. Okay. And so, you know, that's a story you'd think Podesta might care about. But what, uh, what Podesta says is saw it just churns in the Breitbart free beacon loop. That's his response. Look over here. It's forward Podesta slash Weiss. So let's talk about the uh, the problem here. And uh, this is sort of a variant of what I said before about why facts and truth matter, okay? And about holding things to a, a higher standard. I'm too tired to to angrily rant at you. So uh, so I'll just I'll, I'll I'll just say this point. You need to understand what that email that I just showed you means. It means that John Podesta is not scared of us, right? John Podesta is basically saying, yeah, so what? No one cares. That story is not going to go anywhere because it's going to remain in what he calls the Breitbart free beacon loop. Now, I, you know, I write for Breitbart. My goodness. Very dry. Uh, and uh, it's not fun to be in a loop. This is what happens when you write for Breitbart. I'm going to tell you what happens. I could write the best story in the world. I could write the most accurate, groundbreaking story in the world. I could have video footage of Hillary Clinton, you know, strangling puppies to death and throwing them into the Snake River Canyon, and it would be ignored. And that's because I have to work twice as hard or 10 times as hard, because immediately, as soon as you say Breitbart Lee, let me point out another problem. Uh, and, and by the way, I'm a, a journalist who has standards. Um, where I have no career, there's no career path from Breitbart. Michelle Fields showed you the career path from Breitbart. The career path from Breitbart is if I were to attack Trump and lie about the people who work for me and talk about how awful Steve Bannon is and maybe he groped me once in an elevator when, you know, he was high on crystal meth. If I said all that, which by the way, that didn't happen because we were both sober. I'm joking. It's a little joke. But uh, the point is, the way to do, the way to get somewhere, like Michelle Fields got a, a Huffington Post gig out of out of backstabbing. Ben Shapiro's backstabbing really didn't help him. He got some TV appearances, but it's not like the New York Times is ever going to pick up Ben Shapiro, although they could. He's very small. You could just literally pick him up and put him in your pocket. But uh, but it's not like the New York Times or the Washington Post or, by the way, they never get, I, I never get tired of Ben Shapiro's short jokes. I just never do. He could be taller than me. I don't know. But, uh, but uh, this is the problem for journalists. But there's a problem for you, dear reader. This is not about my career. This is not about Ben Shapiro's little career uh, or Michelle Fields. This is about the problem for you, which is if we're going to reach people, we need to figure out how to break out of the right-wing loop. I think one of the ways to do that is with accurate journalism and correct stories and holding ourselves to higher standards. I know that Breitbart has more and more readers. We hit 200 million page views last month, and I'm sure we're going to beat that this month because election, right? And also Breitbart's in the, been in the news a lot, and I'm hoping that people will come by and like the product. But you have to have a product for them to like. Again, if your whole thing is you already hate, here, here's how I view it, okay? I don't want to play to the choir. I've never been interested in playing to the choir because they're already in the church. If we're going to win this election, if we're going to defeat Hillary, and we're going to keep defeating Hillary, and then we're going to defeat establishment Republicans, you have to do more than, than preach to the choir. You have to actually reach beyond your base. This is one of the reasons I love Milo so much. 
Milo is clearly reaching people who were outside of the base before. And a number of the people out there doing stuff, even the people doing stuff on social media, some of them are definitely reaching outside the base. Now, you know, is that a good thing? I, I think so. But w what I want to hit is, oh, I'm just trying to adjust. See, I'm in a chair. Let me point out what's going on. I'm, I'm in a chair that's like a, a rolly back chair. So if I'm making you seasick, I'm sorry about that. But the uh, chair, look at that. So I'm interested in reaching beyond the base. And if we're ever going to beat a guy like John Podesta, we got to make him scared. He's got to know that if a story is in the Breitbart loop, it's probably accurate. It's probably going to get picked up on. How do you do that? I don't know exactly. The, the way I know how to do it is by trying to do good journalism, is trying to do work that's seamless, trying to do work that's fair, and trying to do work that, that is fair, where uh, if, if, again, I didn't get into media to be just as bad as the media that I left. I didn't get into media uh, on the right. I didn't switch from the left to the right to be just as dishonest as the left. And I was never dishonest uh, when I was on the left. I was always honest. That's why I had to run screaming from the left, right? Uh, that's why I had to leave, because I was honest. I got kicked off Daily Coves, don't forget. If you don't know the story, I'll tell you. I got kicked off Daily Coves for saying, it seemed to me John Edwards might be having an affair. That was enough to get me booted uh, off Daily Coves. And when I started to report on the Pigford Black Farmers fraud, that got me in some trouble at uh, Huffington Post, and eventually I had to leave. I quit after they screwed my friend Andrew Breitbart over, but... Uh, I got into, you know, the weeds with the Pigford story, not gaining popularity. So we we need to break out. The, the thing about the mainstream media is it's bigger. And that means they have more resources. That means they have more money. It's amazing, like, what these communities... I've been doing research for a few hours what these community organizers make. It's amazing. Anyway, that's what I'm thinking about. Hey, I'm going to try something that I don't do very often. No, not these might see this. One of the reasons you don't see me with my glasses very often is because uh, I don't wear them for the aesthetics. These are dollar readers, so they're horrible. Um, uh, I mean, look, but they're a dollar, so if I lose them and they break, I don't care. But anyway, hey, I'm reading everybody's stuff. If you if you have any questions or something like that, let me try to take a couple of questions and I'll end this because I'm tired and that bed right there is uh, is calling my name, but. Uh, if anyone has any questions, let me try it. Yeah, someone's talking about Jill Stein doing it. Someone's asked me if Trump will win. I don't know. I think so, but I, I've been saying that for a while. I'm, I could. I could retweet it. People should just look it up. I didn't just write about the, No, I didn't watch the, the O'Keefe video today. I watched it on Saturday because I'm an insider. Yeah, I can't factor voter fraud into it. I think we need to r report on it. This is another reason honest reporting is important. Someone's saying, don't we have to be nasty too? I, I don't know. How's that? How's that strategy working out? Oh, okay. Well, I'll just, I will, I will retweet the email. How, how do you do that? I work for Breitbart News. I'm a little, uh, someone's asking who I work for. I'm the lead investigative reporter for Breitbart News. Yeah, I'm, I am part of the new media and it's horrible. It's horrible. It doesn't pay as well as the old media, which doesn't pay very well either. I wish I'd known how, before I got into journalism eight years ago, I should have done some research. I'm very good at research, but I didn't look up. But it's like one of the worst paying professions. I used to be a graphic artist. I used to do video and uh, visual effects for TV and film and teaching. I made like a lot more money, like two, three times more than I'm making now. So bad move, especially when I'm having kids. Uh, I, yeah, I think the Veritas videos are very damaging. I I think it's great. I watched them on Saturday. I've written uh, a couple stories about them, and then I was following 
stuff uh, all day on it. Yeah, Hating Breitbart's good. I, I'm in a film called Occupy Unmasked. If you get a chance, watch that. Can you hire me for a small job? I don't know. How small is it? <laughs> and what's the job? Like lawn care? I don't know. Perhaps. Depends. <laughs> we're about to move. We're, we're about to move. If anyone wants to hire me for anything that pays well, uh, let me know. <laughs> let me know because we're about to move and I'm going to need like 10 grand or something like that. Yeah, I don't even know. I, I don't, I, I, how's Milo? Someone's asking. I haven't talked to Milo. The last time I talked to Milo was at the uh, conventions in Philadelphia where we hugged. That's right. But it was consensual. It wasn't a bad touch. Yeah, so Drudge Breitbart partnering with Infowars. I, I, uh, what do you, look here, let me try it this way. I'll try it this way. Um, how do you think Infowars comes across, be honest, how do you think Infowars comes across to someone who is not already um, a believer in the ideas that Infowars are, are proposing? How do you, how, if you just watched Simple Wars for the first time, you're not that political, how would you think they'd come across? There you go. People are answering in a variety of ways. So, you know, I'm not, I'm not, I, 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 I'm saying <laughs> that what most people are saying is correct. You know what I mean? What most people are saying is, I think, the way it comes across. So I think someone, if you look at someone who I think comes across pretty well on the left, and I think uh, her success is, has been part of it, and uh, Bannon's a fan of hers as well, is Rachel Maddow. Uh, if you look at Maddow, her, forget what she's saying, forget her ideas for a second, because her ideas are wrong, but Maddow generally... And, and I could see where she would be naggy and irritating to some people, but she comes across as very rational. She's going to lay out uh, facts for you. Fact, 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 fact. Uh, that's, in, again, you don't have to, I don't like her ideas at all, but I think her presentation, the left is very good at their presentation of ideas. And like I say, Bannon uh, watches Maddow as well, the way she thinks, lays things out is very lawyerly. Um, so, yeah, I mean, people people are bagging on, on Rachel. It's because you don't like her ideas. But I'm telling you, if you sat somebody down who's moderate and you showed them Alex Jones or Rachel Maddow, pick any 10 minutes of that, who do you think would come across as more rational and intelligent? Just ask yourself that. So, uh, again, you know, Alex is... I, <laughs> Here's one of the things that's weird about me. So I have all these connections to people uh, who are in the news now. I mean, I used to work for Steve Bannon hired me uh, for Breitbart after I was not working there. Andrew Bright, Breitbart hired I'm one of the few people who's been hired by Andrew Breitbart and Steve Bannon. So Bannon, who's running the Trump campaign, I know very well. He's my boss, et cetera, was my boss. He'll be back soon. Uh, I know Billy Bush because I worked on Access Hollywood as a graphic artist for about five years. I know uh, Roger Stone. I know, I just, there's uh, like all sorts of people. So, so Alex, about 15 years ago, 16 years ago, maybe, I lived in Austin, Texas. And uh, boy, it's probably 20, maybe, no. I'll go with, I'll go with 15. About 15 years ago, I lived in Austin, Texas. It was shortly after a Rick Linklater film called Waking Life came out, and I love that film. It was kind of an animated sequel to Slacker, which I also, I'm an indie film guy, so I love both of those films. And, uh, uh, but Waking Life had come out, and Alex Jones is featured in Waking Life. If you have not seen uh, uh, Waking Life, you you should, if nothing else, to see an animated Alex Jones 
with a megaphone uh, yelling out the window. And I used to watch when I lived in Austin, if anyone's lived in Austin, at the time Alex had a, a cable show. And I used to watch Alex's cable show because I knew him from Waking Life. Oh, that dude and stuff like that. So that was one of the neat things about living in Austin 15 years ago. So I'm just saying, if someone's like, well, how do they come across? And Drudge, you know, nobody's perfect. But, uh, but Drudge gets stuff wrong sometimes. I like Drudge a lot. And obviously, he's one of the most read pages out there. And... Uh, I don't know. I mean, that's my take on InfoWars. I think they do a lot of good work. I'll also say this, too. Um, when, uh, I'm going to say it again because it's important. Um, it's not that I'm trying to name drop, but, I, you know, Andrew Breitbart was a close friend of mine. We used to talk three times a day. The last 18 months, I was one of the people closest to Andrew Breitbart. last 18 months of his life. And uh, when Andrew died... I didn't like how InfoWars was about it. They helped spread this false theory that Andrew was killed. And that bothers me personally. So, uh, it, I don't, it's, it's one of those things I don't like arguing about because I know what happened. There's not a doubt in my mind what happened. I talked to Andrew three hours before he died. I know what, what his health issues were. Uh, I know what was going on with him in his life. I know that he just started a diet and he was exercising again and all this stuff. And uh, um, so I personally, if you look back at what InfoWars was talking about with Andrew Breitbart's death, it's not it's not professional. But pretend you were friends with somebody and then go look at the coverage that they were doing. So that bothered me. I'm not singling them out. Lots of people did it. Uh, but InfoWars was, was one of the people who did it. So that's another thing that kind of bothers me about them. That being said, when the WikiLeaks stuff was going on, uh, I was talking to somebody over at InfoWars, and Alex said hi to me, and by, you know, through an intermediary, he said, say hi. Um, uh, someone asked if I'm friends with Will Cow. I... I wouldn't say I'm friends with him. I really like Wilkow a lot. I've been on the show a number of times, and uh, he's a great host. He's a great guy personally. He's he's very informed uh, when he goes that I've been on the phone and also in the studio. So I wouldn't say we're friends because we don't talk much. He was, I, I, I interviewed Kevin Smith. I told you, I'm an indie film guy. So I interviewed Kevin Smith, the filmmaker who did Clerks, uh, I'll talk about Mike in a sec. Um, and uh, anyway, I interviewed Kevin Smith about 10 years ago. And uh, it's all up on YouTube. If you type in Stranahan, Kevin Smith, you'll find it. Uh, um, uh, and Chernovich turns out, not Chernovich, oops, Wilkow, it turns out, is a huge Kevin Smith fan. So one one day before I was about to do it on the radio show, I guess he was idly looking me up, and he found all my Kevin Smith interviews, and it's an awesome interview. If you like Kevin Smith, it's a really good interview. At the time, uh, Kevin, it, it, he told me it was one of the best interviews ever done with him. And he's gone up to be bigger with all his TV stuff since then. But anyway, so that's, that's my Wilkow story. Uh, uh, Cernovich, uh, first off, I don't know how to pronounce his name properly. I never know whether it's Chernovich or Cernovich. I've heard Chuck Johnson say it's Cernovich, I think, or the, the proper Eastern European pronunciation is Chernovich, probably. But, uh, uh, I, you know, <clears throat> so I like Mike personally. I have his book, uh, Guerrilla Mindset. I think it's a good book. Mike is doing something very interesting. And I thought about doing it for a while because one thing I did before I was working for Breitbart when I was still writing for Huffington Post is I did internet marketing stuff. Another guy I interviewed, for instance, is Seth Godin. If you know who Seth Godin is, if you don't know who Seth Godin is, forget about it. If you do know who he is, he's huge. He's one of the big... Uh, marketing guys, great, great marketing guy. I was a big fan of his. I did in a information product uh, with a friend of mine, Johnny B. Truant. Johnny has gone on to write one of the great, 
books on self-publishing. And so Mike is doing something that once I saw what he was doing, I'm like, okay, that's very interesting. He's combining internet marketing concepts. And you'll see Mike talk about this stuff. Uh, I don't I don't watch much of his stuff because I'm just too busy. I don't watch anybody's stuff. But uh, he'll talk about like A-B testing. He had a tweet today about A-B testing and stuff like that. Um, uh, or he, he's clearly doing stuff about branding. I've read a ton of books on branding. I've taught on this stuff. Again, I did this course uh, uh uh, called Question the Rules with Johnny B. Truant. We interviewed all sorts of big people. I was in that world of internet marketing. So I, 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 I think what Mike's doing is very interesting. So uh, that the lead up to that is, and and he's a great Trump supporter, and he's a sincere Trump supporter. And he's not a desk jockey. He'll go out there and put himself on the line and do protest and stuff like that. And by the way, obviously, I'm not saying anything here that I wouldn't say to Mike. Because um, people who are fans of Mike's are watching. And uh, But I'm, but I'm going to be really honest. And someone asked me, the journalism stuff he does sometimes bugs me because he gets things wrong. And that bothers me. And anybody who's heard me rant about this knows why I think accuracy is important. Um, and Mike's a good example, unfortunately, that, and, and so is Jim Hoft, who I mentioned in my last video. And so are a bunch, I can name a bunch of people. Apparently, getting stuff wrong doesn't hurt you. <laughs> I don't know how else to put it. Now, as a journalist, that that tends to bother me. I, I guess it would be like if you were an opera singer and you heard somebody, you know, and you heard a T-Pain using that auto-tune thing and you're like, grr, I'm, here I am, I'm an opera singer and I don't like the guy doing it. But, but I've seen Mike get stuff just completely wrong. But boy, it gets views, boy, it gets hits. I can't argue with that. I can't possibly argue with the success there, um, but as a proponent of getting things correct. And let me explain why. I, I consider Mike at this point a hobbyist journalist, and I think that that's great that that's a category. I am a professional journalist. What I mean by that is I've spent eight years doing this crap, okay? And I've put myself way on the line. I mean, I went to Beirut, Lebanon, when there was a travel advisor and you weren't supposed to go there. I throw myself into union protest for years now, years now, Occupy Wall Street for years now, years and years and years. And, um, I, and I've lost friends and I've lost career opportunities in favor of getting stories right. So for me, I've made sacrifices to get stories right. I've quit Breitbart to get a story. I've been fired for Breitbart for getting a story right. I was working on a story about Republicans in Texas, and I got fired for it. And uh, and I, I didn't take it lying down. I wrote about it. So I'm a guy who doesn't, this isn't like a hobby, right? This isn't like something that I do on the weekend. This has been a, I have not, I've spent one week with my family in the past seven months. And I have four kids at home and I do stay up at night wondering, am I doing the right thing? Like, am I, am I, is this really what I should be doing? Is this the right thing to do for my kids? I don't know. Um, and as if anyone's been talking to me, I've been yapping, so I haven't seen it. So you'll want to say it again. Um, but uh, uh, someone asked what made your life switch made me think, this change. Uh, I got into it accidentally. I was doing comedy videos on YouTube. This was back in 2007 when I was working at Access Hollywood. And I, uh, I, I made a few videos and uh, uh, then I, that, and I ended up writing for Huffington Post doing comedy. Then the John Edwards story broke and uh, I'm good at journalism. I'm very good at it. 
and most people aren't good at it. Most people are not good at looking at a story and thinking it through. And part of the reason I'm good at it is uh, I studied philosophy when I was young. Uh, I'm, I'm an objective, I was an objectivist. I'm Ran fan, I went to Ayn Rand's funeral and I went to an objectivist high school. And so I have a background in logic and uh, uh, fallacies and informal logic and logic and syllogisms and all that boring stuff, but it allows me to think through stories pretty well. And then I have good research skills. And uh, so anyway, I end up doing journalism and uh, uh, I'm good at it. And then when the Pigford story happens, and I start working on that with Andrew, um, uh, and I started to really be exposed to what was going on on the left, because when I was on the left, I did video work for Move On, so on and so forth. I mean, I was on the left, was making a living, and so on. And then I started to, when I met Andrew, I started to go like, well, gee, I was really like wrong about some things, and there's stuff I didn't know about the left. So now I feel like I have a duty to do it. And again, maybe that's one of the reasons I take this stuff seriously, and maybe it's one of the reasons that... Uh, I'm doing it and have not. I mean, I talk to my wife and most of my kids uh, daily. I talk to my wife every day. But uh, but I feel like I'm doing something important. And Stephen King is a great book. Whatever you think of Stephen King, he, uh, he, he wrote a great book called On Writing, which is, if you're a writer, it's highly worth reading. And one of the things that... Uh, that uh, King says in there is um, if you're if you're if you're good at something you should do it basically he talked about writers who've written one book so so people are talking about me dissing Mike no yeah no I'm not dissing like I say the thing is I think I get Mike and um, he said something today if you look at the AB thing he says he doesn't edit for instance because it's too time consuming so I I can't argue with that. In other words, he if your goal is to get more hits and get a return on investment, right, which is what he talked about it. He talked about A-B switching, uh, sorry, A-B testing with editing. People were like, someone was like, you have a lot of grammatical errors, why don't you edit? He says, I just, I'm, I just write. I don't worry about editing because there's no return on investment ROI. Again, I told you, I was an internet marketing guy. So, um, yeah, right. That's, that's what I'm saying. That's what, that's, that's, that's someone saying he's not trying to be, I know that's what I'm saying. He's what I call a, uh, you know, there's such a thing as like a gentleman farmer. They have a farm, but they're not really a farmer for a living. It looked like someone asked if Mike was a fag, but then I had to read it and said, is Mike a fad? There you go. Uh, I, I don't know. I think Mike's going to be successful at whatever he does, uh, um, uh, and I think that maybe he's not going to uh, want to do the journalism thing. He Look, he had some book suggestions. One was on personal branding. There was a couple of ones. They weren't really about doing journalism. One was it wasn't really about a journalistic pursuit. Uh, this is just to cap this, because I'm a professional and because I view this as a career, right, it's really important for me to get stories right because all I have at the end of the day is a sheath of papers that I can go, oh, look, here's the stories I worked on. And oh, look, back in 2013, when I was talking about the Syrian refugee crisis, I was right. When I was talking about ISIS, I was right. When I talked about this story, I was right. That's all I, all I have. At the end of the day, my my work can't be judged in anything else. And the fact is, nobody's going to hire me, really, for the number of Twitter followers that I have. And I'm not doing what Milo's doing, for instance. And there are people who do kind of what I do. I don't I don't know. I mean, I, I, I do stuff differently than most writers at Breitbart. So anyway, that's the thing. Uh, what do I think of Stefan? I, you know, I have not watched much of his stuff. I've watched a little bit of his stuff. I like the sort of rationality that he brings to it, that seems good. The presentation is uh, interesting. Um, uh, I, when I first saw him, I'm like, well, how's this dude getting all these 
uh, comments. You know what I mean? Uh, but so then I looked into it a little bit. I'm like, oh, okay. Well, he's had a, a po I guess a podcast or something like that for a while. So there we go. Let me see what else. I don't. I don't even know who that is. I don't know what the people are talking about this closer thing. I have no idea what that is. Uh, do I think Fox has been moving to the left? I think I uh, Tim Tim. Uh, I'll talk about Tim Cast in a second. Uh, again, I don't watch that much Fox. I think Fox clearly is an establishment public uh, broadcast network that tries to appeal to the rights. It's right that sees it as a market. Um, they have some people there who do very good work who would have hired someone like Cheryl Atkinson or someone like that who's a serious, Cheryl does very good work. She's a serious investigative journalist. Instead, they have personalities and, you know, Geraldo or whatever, or fine looking ladies and stuff like that. That's what they're known for. So I'm not, I'm not a fan of that model, uh, but whatever. They've had an audience, but, uh, someone asked about Tim Cast. I like Tim a lot personally, and he's clearly an innovator in the stuff that he's done with live streaming and using drones and stuff like that. I'm like a multimedia journalist. One thing you'll notice is that I jump around and do all kinds of stuff. Um, uh, so I, I, I technically, I'm here, I'll show you. Here, look. Here's my, here's my room. This is my hotel room right now. So there's my keyboard oops I don't know why it's pretend it's in focus hang on there we go oh, there we go so there's my keyboard I use that to compose with there's my blue Yeti microphone I use for podcasting I have a, a, a very nice MacBook that I can use to let me see I probably have yeah I have Final Cut Pro up. I was working on a tutorial. This is drone footage I shot and working on some graphics and stuff. Say, uh, as a nerd, as a as a tech guy who's into equipment and creativity, there's stuff I like to do. So I really like the stuff Tim's doing technically. And then I hung out with him a little bit at the Republican National Convention. He's close to my friends, uh, 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 Cassandra Fairbanks. And uh, Cassandra is someone who used to be my mortal enemy on the Steubenville rape case, but I like Cassandra quite a bit. And uh, she's friends with Tim, and I just really like meeting him. And uh, I do admire the stuff he's doing technically. I think he's doing innovative stuff journalistically. There's not that many people doing innovative stuff journalistically. And I tend to, uh, I'm probably ADD, uh, and, and so I tend to try different things. Andrew was, I only realized that recently, that I might be ADD. Uh, do I think the MSM is dead? No. So, uh, I could talk a lot about this. When I worked at NBC, I saw NBC, okay, slowly, slowly going out of business. And... Um, they started to reduce, like the commissary would stay open less. The bank was open like one less a day and stuff like that. So CNN is a major brand that will probably shift somewhat if Trump wins the election, which he very well may. Um, so... Uh, uh, this goes back to what I was just saying about Tim. I don't see very many people talking about innovative new business models for doing broadcast journalism. And my background in video production includes uh, working for equipment manufacturers. I was an expert on a product called the Video Toaster and a computer called the Amiga that most of you probably don't remember. And if you do, represent, right? But uh, I worked for a company called New Tech. Uh, with the video toaster, and uh, I was an expert on it and stuff like that. And uh, if I'm losing signal, I'll just I'll just stop. But uh, 
But anyway, I was, uh, I was a video toaster expert. And so I think a lot about low cost production. And I, I basically have an entire uh, production studio that fits in a backpack that I could do feature films with or whatever. And so uh, that to me is neat. But uh, anyway, it's really late. I appreciate people asking questions. I don't usually do this part very often and you stuck with me for a while, so I appreciate that. But anyway, good night, everybody. Love you guys. Thanks very much. Talk to you. Bye.